All right, what's up, everyone? Chris here from Maven Analytics, sitting down with Enrique from our instructor team. And for anyone who doesn't know Enrique, been with us how long now? Like five, six years, it feels like forever. One of the first members of the Maven team started by translating a bunch of our Excel courses into Spanish and since then has taught all sorts of courses from Excel dashboard design to Google Sheets, uh, MO201 certification prep statistics, and now digging into AI with a brand new course, Copilot for Microsoft Excel. So excited to sit down, kind of talk to you and, and learn a little bit more about that course. So to kick it off, why don't we just start with, talk to us about what that course is all about. What's kind of the structure? What can students expect inside that course? The course is generally just an overview of Copilot's capabilities for Microsoft Excel. So the goal is really just to showcase its full set of features right now, and also to find the scenarios in which Copilot or AI is the most effective avenue for solving real world data analytics cases. It's also about identifying the times where it's not the most useful avenue where you still kind of have to rely on your own skills and maybe just use AI as a companion or as assistant, or even just refrain from using it, you know? So what we do in the course, we'll start by getting, you know, students set up with a Copilot Pro subscription if they need it with a 365 subscription, they both offer free trials. And then from there, we'll kind of start talking features, limitations, and then we just dive right into full, you know, demos using an HR analytics data set. And we'll just kind of work through all the features and start, you know, analyzing the data and coming to our own conclusion. So it, it really is quite a project-based course at the end. Got it. Yeah, that was one of my questions. So are we talking about theoretical stuff, just, uh, you know, what is AI? How does it work? Or are we getting really hands-on with some data sets in this course? It's, it's mostly hands-on. You know, we'll talk about the feature. So say, oh, Copilot can help you add calculated columns to an Excel table. So, you know, format our HR data as an Excel table. And right off the bat, we'll just start, you know, hey, I want to maybe calculate tenure by employees. We'll use a natural language prompt. AI will give us and actually input the formula. And then we'll go from there. And we'll even start to build. So we created that formula. Now maybe we want to analyze, you know, the distribution of tenure for our employees. Copilot can help us do that as well. Awesome. So is this course for like AI experts and really heavy Excel users, or is it for absolutely anyone? Like, Who is this really designed for? I think it's mostly, there's two main groups of people that this is for. The first is just casual Excel users that want to boost their skills by leveraging AI tools. So these are folks that do know their way around a spreadsheet, but maybe aren't familiar with every single Excel function or some of Excel's you know, pivot table capabilities. And Copilot can really help bridge that gap. It can still be helpful if you're a total Excel newbie, but I do think that having some foundational knowledge is key in getting the most out of it. Now, the second group is for, you know, just data professionals or seasoned Excel users that simply want to stay on top of Excel's newest features, right? So they may not get the most use out of it, but this could very easily change as, you know, Microsoft continues to add new features to Copilot. So it is just best to stay in the loop from the start rather than kind of have to play catch up later in the game. Definitely. So one thing, you know, we have a, a chat GPT course as well, where we go through a lot of different case studies and demos kind of similar to, to the Copilot flow. And one thing that was really interesting teaching a course like that is you start to get a really good grasp of like where these tools are really strong and where they're actually quite weak or potentially even dangerous to use. Curious if you had a similar experience with Copilot where uh, and if that's something you talk about in the course, like where it is strong and where it might leave something to be desired. Yeah, good question. I mean, each section of the course is for a particular co-pilot feature and we'll end each section with my verdict as how well co-pilot is able to act as a human replacement for that skill set in particular. There are some where I think it's quite proficient. There are some others where it's quite lacking. I think its biggest mm -hmm. strength, and we see this with Chad GPT as well, is it's in its ability to write formulas based on natural language prompts, right? So we see it with mm -hmm. Chad GPT. It's great for SQL. It's great for Python. It's great for coding, right? So it's the same for Excel. If it needs to write a formula for you and all you're doing is giving it a natural language prompt, I think it's a fantastic tool for that. It's even, an, I think, even an almost expert human replacement. And it, it actually yeah. comes in handy in a number of scenarios. I mentioned one, so it can add new calculated columns for you uh, for tables. It can also create formula-based conditional formatting rules, which, I mean, mm -hmm. you know this, it's it's quite tricky even for some more advanced yeah. Excel users to get, you know, the the um, cell references just right. 
Copilot can do that for you. It can even handle some, you know, single cell dynamic array formulas as well. Granted, those you actually have to copy and paste yourself, so it won't input those directly. But since it can grasp the data that you're working with and understand its position on the spreadsheet, it, it really is just as easy as copying and pasting it at the end. So I think for formulas, it's when it's the best. For its weaknesses, there are still quite a few. First of all, it's right now it's it's just kind of slow, to be honest. Even for very simple tasks like sorting a column, it will take longer than it would to take you to sort that column manually, right? And I think to mm-hmm. that point, many of its features are can still just be replaced with a few simple clicks as long as you know where to click, right? So if you want to sort a column, why would you even have to write a sentence asking it to sort? Go to that column and sort it, right? And that's where those foundational skills really do come in handy. And when you start to realize like when it's necessary and when it's not, because if you just look at the full set of features, you'd think you need to use it for everything, when really I don't think you should. So I think that's one of the weaknesses. The main one still right now though, and it's a shame because I think it's the most exciting feature if if it eventually works as probably Microsoft intends, is its ability to micro to analyze data, sorry, and find insights by itself. Right. Mm-hmm. So right now for every gem that it finds or for every genuinely good observation that it gives you, you still get four or five of the, you know, units sold is highly correlated with revenue or Smith yeah. is the most popular last name. I mean, it's not wrong. It's just not yeah. useful. Right. So I think if you do ask it for something <laughs> to analyze something specifically, it'll do it like fair enough. But if you just say like, hey, like give me some insights here without any guidance, then it's not going to do a, a great job to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I think you posted uh, something about like, there's a perfect relationship between age and birthday or something like yeah. that, which is, yeah. I mean, it's similar to to what I've seen experimenting, which is, you know, any kind of insight that requires some sort of context or nuance or human strategic thinking. I think there's still quite a bit of a gap there, but I mean, great to hear that it can be a time saver and a shortcut for a lot of those other tasks. Um, yeah. So you mentioned this like phrase of human replacement a few times now, and it's a good segue into my last question for you, which is one that we as a team get all the time, which is with the, the pace of AI and how fast things are changing and evolving and getting better, how should I feel about my job security as a data professional, right? As an analyst, a data scientist, a, a BI pro, is AI about to replace my job? Like, Having just produced this course on Copilot, how would you answer that question? I think as it stands, uh, because again, these products are evolving, I think by the day it feels like Copilot is really no more than an AI companion for data professionals. So at best, I think it definitely works as an advantage for an analyst that knows how to use it properly. But by itself, it's honestly no better than an entry-level analyst at this point. Uh, you know, uh, so I think if you're just getting started in the field, know that AI is definitely not going to be a replacement for you, or for the foundational Excel skills that you're likely at, you know, setting out to to get right now. So I think even with you know this new age of AI or AI revolution, the basics are still the place to start because they will actually even enable you to use AI properly from there. Because if you're just relying solely on AI, it's likely kind of going to tie you in a knot. Yeah, without the foundation, uh, how do you even know how to get the most out of AI? How do you know how to develop or craft a smart prompt? And I think you framed it well in that it's it's a companion, it's another tool in the toolkit, not necessarily a replacement for these foundational skills and these unique attributes and and talents that humans bring to the table. Yeah, and I think it's it, you notice it mostly specifically when when you realize that it's not great at just analyzing data you know freely on its own because it's really just not that good at asking smart questions by itself right because if if it did that's when maybe we'd start to get a little bit more you know scared uh, that it might replace us because once you do as an analyst or as an expert in the data you're analyzing or in the field you're in ask it the right question then it does do a great job of answering that right which is fair enough but that's just on the technical aspect but I mm-hmm. think on the soft skills required as an analyst, that's where it's still greatly lacking, which is why we shouldn't be concerned. And it's where analysts with great soft skills like communication and strategic thinking and creativity are only going to become more valuable over time. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Enrique, for answering these questions. Uh, thank you for those tuning in. Make sure to check out Enrique's brand new co-pilot for Microsoft Excel course, now available on the Maven Analytics platform. We'll see you in the next Chris. one.